Greetings, natural-loving viewers, and welcome to this week's edition of Planet Earth, Our Loving Home, featuring the first in a two-part series on the Findhorn Eco-Village, a global community that grew from the concept of environmental, social, economic, and spiritual sustainability. In his book, The Magic of Findhorn, author Paul Hawken describes this eco-Eden on Earth as follows. There have been stories in the press and other media about a small community in the north of Scotland called Findhorn, where people talk to plants with amazing results. Stories of vegetable and flower gardens animated by angelic forms. Stories of plants performing incredible feats of growth and endurance. 40-pound cabbages, 8-foot delphiniums, and roses blooming in the snow. All a short distance from the Arctic Circle on a cold, wind-blown peninsula jutting into the North Sea with its soil as sandy as your local beach. Hello, my name is Noemi, je viens de France. Et uh, je suis ici pour faire uh, la semaine uh, l'Experience Week. Uh, C'est une très belle semaine. C'est très fort en émotion parce qu'on est toujours là. Et là, on doit choisir dans la semaine un domaine où travailler. Et j'ai choisi de venir dans les jardins. Euh, parce qu'en France, je travaille dans des jardins et que je suis intéressée pour travailler de manière euh, consciente la terre. Euh, euh, ils appellent « works in love », travailler avec euh, l'amour. Voilà. <rire> This surreal place, the Findhorn Eco-Village, situated in the Findhorn Bay of Moray, in northeastern Scotland, is a green community emphasizing harmony between human beings and nature. The residents work to create an environment that improves the fundamental quality of life for all. Following the simple principle of not taking away more from the earth than one can give back, such communities strive to reduce their ecological footprint in all aspects of daily life. And to date, the Findhorn village has achieved a footprint that's about half the UK's national average. Even more impressive, a 2007 study by GEN Europe, or the Global Eco-Village Network, in partnership with the Sustainable Development Research Centre, concluded the site had the lowest ever ecological footprint of any community in the industrialised world. The community is very much about being at peace and co-creation and uh, doing what's good and not doing harm and being open. It's very much about being open. I was a vegan before I came here and of course the food here is locally grown, organic, so that's also good It's, it's all, and seasonal. Uh, so the main principles of good healthy diet are held here also, so it's easy to get at. Findhorn began in 1962 when Peter and Eileen Caddy and their three sons, along with Dorothy McLean, arrived at a caravan park in the seaside village of Findhorn. The group came seeking temporary residency as their employment at a hotel in the nearby town of Fors had come to an end. So Peter, Eileen and Dorothy, and there were six of them living in just this tiny little caravan. And they were waiting um, and thinking that they will be here just for a short time and they were just simply waiting for employment and while they were waiting they were staying here and they were only living on eight pounds a week uh, which wasn't very much money to feed them and feed their children so they decided to uh, build a garden around them for years peter eileen and dorothy had followed disciplined spiritual paths and practiced meditation Thus, following guidance from within, in no time the three transformed the previously lifeless, barren, sandy soil of the Findhorn Bay area into vibrant, fertile land. Eileen was listening to her inner voice, what she called the God within. And Dorothy was able eventually to connect with what she called the nature realms and the nature spirits. Um, and she called it the deva, for want of a better word, the devas, where she found that she was able to, to get in touch with the essence of the plants and the nature kingdom as a whole. And Peter was very much a, pers a, a, a guy of putting things into practice. So he would talk to Dorothy and he would talk to um, Eileen and listen to what their guidance was and then try and put that into practice. Peter would ask Dorothy, 
um, questions about how much compost should I put in here? How should I work this soil? And Dorothy would get uh, answers through her inner work. And from that, the garden became uh, a bigger and bigger um, a success. Word spread quickly about the magic of Fintorn, and people came to join the caddies and Dorothy in their work. Soon the original group of six grew into a small community in the village of Fintorn. We were growing very, very large vegetables, and people couldn't understand because it's essentially very soily earth. Uh, so people did not understand why uh, we could get such good vegetables in such poor earth. Not very soily earth, very sandy earth. This was the sand dunes. So that also drew more people here. And then there were some books written about uh, Findhorn. One um, particular one was called The Magic of Findhorn, which was written by an American author, uh, Paul Hawkins. And uh, that drew a lot of Americans over here and started to become very uh, international. The community then formed a charity, which is now known as the Findhorn Foundation. When Martin Roche Nishimori, currently manager of the Health and Safety Department at the Eco Village, first heard about this special community, he never thought that it would become his permanent home. And um, one day my wife was reading a magazine and she heard about this place called Findhorn, this magical place called Findhorn. She read the article, it sounded very, very interesting, and she then read the book uh, The Magic of Findhorn, told me all about it. I then read The Magic of Findhorn, and we thought, great, this sounds like a really interesting place. Let's go and visit it. Let's join the jolly residents of Findhorn Eco Village to learn more about their planet-friendly lifestyle. To date, the Fintorn Eco Village has constructed approximately 61 ecological buildings, all of which respect and honor the environment. We were fortunate enough to be invited to the home of Karen Bowles, a member of the communications team at the Eco Village, and learn about many of the community's fascinating green initiatives. It's about 10 years old. Uh, it was the second house that was built on what we call the Field of Dreams, this area here. And it's an eco house basically because it's designed to maximize the passive solar heat gain. So you can see there's lots and lots of glass on the southern side here. We've got a big conservatory that wraps around the front of the the house and in summer or even in winter we actually manage the heat coming into the house by opening or closing the doors. In summer it can actually get too hot but on a day like today when there's sun we actually heat the house by the passive solar heat gain that comes from the conservatory. The walls are insulated with a, it's like a recycled newspaper that's gone into a pulp and then pumped into the walls. So at the time that this house was built, it was much more insulation than was the code in Scotland. The code now is about the kind of insulation that we use here. Uh, the new development that's happening over there will actually have 500 millimetres of insulation in all their walls. So they basically get down to being carbon neutral. The other thing that's great about the house is we have what's called a breathing wall system. In such a humid climate, you can get so much buildup of moisture actually inside the house. So it works like a Gore-Tex jacket where your moisture comes in and moisture goes out. So it's actually a really incredibly healthy place to live in because the house actually breathes. The moisture level kind of gets equalized and uh, we have special breathing paint so that again the moisture can actually go through the walls. Each household also grows its own organic vegetables and fruit. We have some lettuce seedlings that we will be putting into the coal frame and it will go back on the garden over there and so it extends the time that we can grow lettuce and then we'll start putting plants in for next year. So this year we actually grew a lot of pumpkins in there so we have some really beautiful spaghetti squash that we'll eat over the winter that grew in our coal frame. So you can see lots of other things growing in the garden. We've got a lot of cabbages, we've got uh, the uh, Brussels sprouts. Uh, you can see they're just the last of our raspberries on the raspberry canes through here, uh, which is pretty amazing. You know, it's November and we've still got a few raspberries. Uh, we've still got a few strawberries coming through. We've got tons of leeks. 
uh, and sorrel and lots of herbs and things like that. So we're incredibly fortunate. We've still got uh, carrots and celeriac to harvest. We've got lots of potatoes and this is just in our little back garden. The people of Findhorn live simple lives in the bosom of nature. Martin spoke about how Findhorn transformed his life. I've noticed there's a, there's a lot of release, a lot of dropping off that's happened to me since coming here. Before, I loved the idea of being, oh, spiritual. And now it's more just mundane, day-to-day, -day, everyday thing that's important. And it's kind of dropped away, this, these other desires. I think that's uh, made me a, a very a much more peaceful person. I notice how things don't bother me. And I notice how I feel more loving and more caring. Um, if you like, my lenses have changed. I see the world very, very differently. Blessed viewers, please join us again next Wednesday for Planet Earth, Our Loving Home, and the concluding episode on the Findhorn Eco Village, when we'll learn more about the inspiring Findhorn community and its Earth friendly architecture and facilities. For more information on the Findhorn Eco Village, please visit www.ecovillagefindhorn.com. Find out more about the Findhorn Foundation at www.findhorn.org. Treasured viewers, thank you for your company on today's program. May our lives be forever greened with nature's abundance and love. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash PE. Uh, planet is in trouble. We are so, so close to the red line that perhaps we may wake up tomorrow and find that there's nothing to save after all. The issue of livestock and meat is not only a diet issue, it is an environmental issue. The destruction of the environment by using large areas of land to feed cattle or pigs uh, is, is actually taking up an awful lot of land that could be used to produce far more protein if it was vegetable protein. Making animal protein is wasteful. It is uh, creating a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. 50% of our national greenhouse gas emissions come from the agricultural sector, primarily in the form of methane. The United Nations in particular, but also other organizations, have encouraged people to give up meat. Unless we change our food choices, Nothing else matters because it is meat that is destroying most of our forests. It's meat that pollutes the waters. It is meat that is creating disease which leads to all our money being diverted to hospitals. So um, it's the first choice for anybody who wants to save the earth. It will of course be new kinds of consumer behavior and lifestyles. And all of us, government, business, civil society, individuals, all of us, have a major part to play. I have no doubt that this is a challenge to which we can all rise. The earth we leave for our children must be safeguarded. Let us choose hope, founded on humanitarian values. Let us be determined to place mankind at the heart of our priorities. Be veg, go green to save the planet. Hello eco-conscious viewers and welcome to this week's edition of Planet Earth Our Loving Home, featuring the last in our two-part series on the Findhorn Eco Village, a global community that grew from the concept of environmental, social, economic and spiritual sustainability. A 2007 study found that the site has the lowest ever ecological footprint of any community in the industrialized world. The Eco Village is part of the Findhorn Foundation Charitable Trust. In his book, The Magic of Findhorn, author Paul Hawken describes this eco-Eden on Earth as follows. 
There have been stories in the press and other media about a small community in the north of Scotland called Findhorn, where people talk to plants with amazing results. Stories of vegetable and flower gardens animated by angelic forms. Stories of plants performing incredible feats of growth and endurance. 40-pound cabbages, 8-foot delphiniums, and roses blooming in the snow. All a short distance from the Arctic Circle on a cold, wind-blown peninsula jutting into the North Sea with soil as sandy as your local beach. The Fintong Gardens started in the 60s by people who weren't gardeners at all, didn't have any knowledge, so they um, needed to contact the intelligence of nature in order to help them to grow vegetables. We do organic gardening, 100%, you know, and we don't use any um, artificial fertilizers or pesticides. And our plants are looking generally quite healthy, so I think speaking to them and working with love and action is actually more, very helpful. <laughs> We now join Miss Hansman as she takes us to one of the main centers of organic vegetable production in the Fintorn Eco Village, the Kalern Garden, which helps to fill much of the community's tempered vegetable requirements, as well as supply 140 individual households. So, Kalern Garden is one of the three um, gardens of the Fintorn Foundation. And here in Kalern Garden, we grow mainly vegetables for our community. Um, vegetables inside um, polytunnels and also in the fields. The inside of one of our polytunnels and this is actually the end of the growing season so in these tunnels we can still grow vegetables until December. So we have here mainly lettuces and herbs. We also um, let rest the soil to grow green manure to recover the, uh, um, the fertility. And the people who work here are mainly staff of the Fintown Foundation. And then we, every week we get guests coming to help us, getting to know the foundation, so we, they come and help us to work. Um, and the food we produce uh, is mainly for our own kitchens, for our guests and for, for the people who, who work for the foundation. Um, and we have some surplus which we can sell in our local shops and restaurants. What are the main crops cultivated in the gardens? So, um, mainly um, lettuces, um, we have a lot of Chinese greens we, we, we grow here. Um, so, mainly vegetables which grow in, in light, sandy soils. In the greenhouses we also have tomatoes and cucumbers and beans and uh, some root crops like carrots and um, beetroot. Um, we also grow chicory. As it is the end, almost you know, mid-November, so we're bringing our fields to bed. So that's why we're covering them and uh, put um, manure out into the fields to put nutrients back. And um, so they stay c covered and warm until probably March. And some of the vegetables are still growing outside, which I can actually grow during the winter. So we just protect them with straw and then we will have the first vegetables ready in March. The garden uses 100% natural, eco-friendly compost, which incorporates kitchen waste. This is one of the best jobs in the garden. It's great fun and it's also one of the most important ones because we have very sandy soil and we really need to work on our soil fertility. And so here we're making compost where we use all the food scraps that come from the kitchen and we bring them over and then we layer them up with the manure and with the things that come from the garden. And we also use rock dust and various other ingredients. And then later on we turn the compost and then it goes onto the fields. So it's ground up rock that we're using to remineralize the soil. And the worms also love it a lot. It's really good to add into our fields. And first to add to the compost. So yeah, we maybe mix that in a bit and then we can put this one on. 
Last week we learned about the energy conserving features of Findhorn's eco houses, and today we'll take a look at what's called an eco mobile, an environmentally friendly extension of a traditional caravan home, which marked the beginning of the Findhorn eco village. Here at Findhorn, we're developing what we call the eco mobile. The front of the building, uh, the porch is, is built of recycled doors and windows. Um, the rest of the building is mostly new materials. The roof has a, a rubber membrane and my intention is at some point to put a grass, a green roof, uh, on the top of that. Um, we cross the bridge to enter the building underneath a pergola that will be covered in climbing roses. So these are recycled materials. Uh, this is a, a polycarbonate, which is a, like a a translucent material that lets lots of natural light into the building. In the porch here we, we're growing tomatoes. Inside the dwelling the emphasis is on a kind of a minimalist aesthetic. It's designed and constructed along minimalist lines. Um, high levels of natural light so there's a skylight in the center of this space which brings in high levels of natural light. And then throughout the rest of the building, there's a similarly high level of natural light, which I think is, is one way to bring a sense of relaxation. Materials, use of bamboo flooring, bamboo surfaces in the kitchen. These are sustainably grown materials. Uh, it's energy efficient in the sense that the building is very well insulated and the heating is done with a single wood stove. And the wood stove is sufficient to heat not just this room, but also the bedroom and the hallway. The application of the polycarbonate material, which lets natural light down into this space. So the very high level of light we have in here currently is due to natural light. Um, there's a small bathroom here. A lot of wardrobe storage space on the right here. The intention is to, to at least bring the qualities of a sacred space to, to this bedroom which incorporates a hot tub and a hammock and uh, everything you need really for a simple but in one sense luxurious lifestyle. A green roof is partially or completely covered with vegetation. It's also known as a living roof, providing many benefits to the residents. The building is our universal hall which is our much loved uh, cultural centre and we decided to install a green roof. So what you can see up there now is a roof combining sedum and mosses and lichens, different kinds of growing plants, um, sitting on top of a, a, a substrate of about 200 millimetres of soil and then underneath that is a rubber membrane. And the system's been in place for about three years. Um, the sedum which was the original plant that we put in there, which is an alpine succulent and supposed to be very hardy, in fact has not thrived. But what's interesting is that the roof is being populated by mosses and lichens, which are the kind of indigenous plants of this area and grow all over the local sand dunes. So in, ultimately in time it will end up being something like the appearance of the sand dunes covered in mosses and lichens, which will be delightful. The Fintorn Eco Village is also powered by sustainable energy systems. Its community owned wind turbines supply more than 100% of the community's electricity needs. Many homes and community buildings have solar panels for hot water heating. Overall, the Fintorn Eco Village now receives 28% of its total non transportation energy from green sources. In addition, the Eco Village has adopted an ecological wastewater treatment system using a state-of-the-art living machine sewage treatment facility which replaces conventional, high-energy, chemically intensive treatment with an environmentally friendly approach that mimics the water cleansing process in the natural world. What happens is uh, we're treating the wastewater, so that's sewage, but also when people wash their dishes, when they wash their clothes, 
um, and have a bath, everything that leaves the household. So we treat the majority of the park. So this is a hill. We've got three tanks here. They're 8,000 gallons each. And uh, what happens here is that the liquid that's been ground down, it, it pushes through the tanks, and this is anaerobic conditions. That means without air. This is where anaerobic um, bacteria first start to digest the organic matter that's in the water. That's the first stage of the living machine. So the living machine was actually built in 1995, and it was the first one in Europe, so that was very exciting for the community to have that here. And then uh, the water travels underground in a huge pipe, and then it splits off down these two lines here. So the more lines we have, the more capacity for water we can treat. Um, at the moment, we treat about 25 cubic metres a day of water, and we have capacity to treat more than that. It's about 300 people, so... It's actually one of the smallest living machines. The treated water meets national standards and is pure enough to discharge directly into the sea or be recycled. Fintorn Eco Village seeks to act as a constructive global model that shows how living sustainably can really make a difference to our beautiful planet, to our well-being, and to all God-created beings that coexist with us. We now um, do lots of uh, work for the local community, as in um, educational work. You see a lot of school children coming here, and we also have outreach programs that we send out to around the community. There's a lot of uh, talent within this community that now, now works outside the community, benefiting both sides. Our hats off to you, the wonderful staff of the Fintorn Eco Village, who have provided us with such an excellent tour of your magical place. To all its members and supporters of the Findhorn Foundation, we thank you for your transformative work in bettering our world and leading us to a future where human beings live in everlasting harmony with nature and all its inhabitants. So hello everybody on Supreme Master TV. Be veg, go green to save the planet. For more information on the Findhorn Eco Village, please visit www.ecovillagefindhorn.com. Find out about the Fintorn Foundation at www.fintorn.org. Serene viewers, we appreciated your company today on planet Earth, our loving home. May all communities across the globe uphold true peace and virtue. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash PE. is not a choice. It's a noble duty to save the planet. Supreme Master Ching Hai. Organic Vegan, the planet cooling solution. According to the latest reports, more than 51% of the greenhouse gases that heat up the planet are from the animal industry. So if we stop it, the planet cools off by at least more than half. By using all the world's tillable land to cultivate organic vegetables and fruits instead, we eliminate a further 40% of the CO2.
Plus, save 32 trillion US dollars in climate mitigation costs. Save millions of climate refugees each year. Save lives lost through disasters. Save many island nations from sinking. Save oceans from acidification and dead zones. Save glaciers, lakes, and rivers from dying. Save nations from desertification. Save the lungs of the earth from deforestation. Save over one billion world citizens, including children, from hunger. Restore the health of the world's citizens. Save the planet for us and future generations. What are we waiting for? Be veg, go green to save the planet. Supreme Master Ching Hai.